Good morning, everyone. It is my pleasure to be, uh, to be your host for today's webinar, IBM ELM ASPICE Compliance. On behalf of Telematics Wire, IBM, and Microgenesis, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. We appreciate you taking time off your busy schedules to join us today. We hope you'll find the webinar we have lined up for you to be fruitful and interactive. As we are aware that automotive process improvement and capability assessment model ASPICE and the safety standard ISO 26262 are the most widely used process in, uh, standards in automotive systems and software engineering. Working with various automotive OEMs throughout the world requires adherence to these standards, but setting up a new ASPICE project is risky, where companies frequently face issues with conception and customization. How do you intend to stand out from the crowd? In this webinar, our distinguished speakers will discuss how tools help automate the processes, establish required traceability between engineering work products, manage test and design information, streamline product configurations, and run successful engineering projects for your organization while adhering to safety, security, and compliance. Going forward, our speakers today are Ms. Vilasni Prabhu, automotive industry expert, Mr. Andreas Schwind, solution engineer, IBM Australia, Mr. Dhananjay K, VP Technical Services, Microgenesis TechSoft Private Limited, and Mr. Murugan Muruddapan, solution engineer, engineering lifecycle management, IBM AI applications. Today's webinar is organized jointly by IBM and Microgenesis to demonstrate how intelligent process automation can facilitate faster operations and boost efficiency. If you have any questions during their presentations, please type them into the Q uh, question or Q&A box. As you can see in your control panel, you may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We'll collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. So let's begin the webinar. To begin, this, uh, to begin with, I would like to invite our moderator, Mr. Dhananjay. Please welcome Mr. Dhananjay. Okay, thank you very much, Ashi. And uh, uh, thanks everybody for making yourself available for this uh, webinar. I promise you will have something to take back home post this webinar. Uh, without further delay, let's get started. And I've, we've lined up, uh, we put together uh, you know, a fruitful session for all of you. Uh, we have a keynote session from one of our industry experts uh, in the automotive domain. We start with that, and then later we move on to IBM solutions for end-to-end -end engineering lifecycle and how do we achieve compliance and manage complexities using these solutions. That will be covered by one of our speaker, worldwide speaker. And we also have a quick peep into how the solution works in real, and that's something that will be very exciting for all of you to start with. So let's get started with our first session. And uh, uh, Madam Vilasani uh, Prabhu, right? So I just would like to just give a quick brief about her and especially in today's world, uh, which is excited about growing complexities of uh, electrical and electronics and automotive engineering, realizing goals of autonomous, uh, autonomous uh, connected and electrified vehicles. There are very few people who have got the real opportunity to kind of understand and go through this complexity and mature themselves. And here is an executive leader, an industry expert in the domain of automotive, particularly in the area of electrical and electronics and connected vehicles. So she's been in the industry for more than 30 years, uh, managing various management positions, uh, worked in esteemed organizations like Renault, Nissan, Tata Motors, General Motors, Bosch, and many others. And uh, she will be sharing her thoughts around how process tools set up by efficient work process establishes required traceability between engineering work products and also manage test and design information, streamline product on configuration and run successful engineering projects for organizations while adhering to most important thing is security and compliance in today's world. Uh, Madam, over to you. We are happy to have you here. Uh, over to you. You can present your deck. There you go. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Dhananjay, for that great uh, intro. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to share my thoughts and learnings in automotive industry. Yes, I got um, an opportunity to 
work on electrical electronics last 30 years, wherein it is a cream time for a whole world where old was transmart, uh, transforming from mechanical to complete electrical electronics and IT. So the, uh, today, a uh, car is a uh, uh, vehicle and any transport, uh, transportation media is under the, uh, what you call, uh, um, blessings of IT world. So the, today, the constraints have lied down and the design and solutions we need to think in all directions in order to realize and make it uh, uh, available or viable for any requirements and applications. So to start with, uh, let me set up uh, uh, a base by remembering or rem remembering one of the quote which has been uh, stated by Jim Hackett: uh, "Cost of complexity are hard to see. Delivering a vehicle as a OEM uh, to the market to the customer hand, it is not an easy process. The process which we go through it and deliver." Uh, delivered in a, uh, in, a, in a duration of five years duration as an OEM, then finally, when it comes to the hand of a person, hand of people as a product, the customer ex expectation would have gone to a different level. And the process, whatever we have followed with respect to managing, with respect to the suppliers, with respect to um, the ICs, chips, and all electronics, and finally, you see different reactions from the market in terms of the performance of the product, in terms of the performance of engineering and the customer expectation. That is why the cost of complexity is very hard to see when you have got a components around 30,000 30, plus, which has to be managed and deliver a product. So uh, looking at today's complexity and the complexity of a vehicle itself, today right thing to do is prepare and prevent, but not repair and repent. So this is this is the um, uh, this is the thinking we need to have every action what you do whether it's a supplier level or a designer level or inductor le in, uh, or integrated level that is where we need to think and go ahead as a solution provider into the automotive industry. So coming to the uh, the basic slide which I had put today we are talking about uh, um, a vehicle vehicle means software software is a, a different kind of fuel which drives the whole ecosystem. Um, millions of lines of codes are getting added, electronics are getting added, functionalities are getting added. The way it is going exponentially, it is beyond some, pers some persons of intelligence level. We need to have a collective intelligence across the boundaries. One organization expertise is not sufficient. It is a, a today's deliveries, today's products are into the space of where everybody could contribute, make it function, and have a responsible for the delivery and functionality across the customer base. I put last, year, last 30 years, how exactly electronics have been capturing automotive space step by step, which is all no, known to us, just for us to just remind ourselves from where we have started and how we went ahead, starting from maybe engine control module, having a good dash, then growing and adding one by one functionalities. The whole vehicle has become a plug and play of functionalities of various, various initially those started various ECUs, intelligent controllers, disconnected, but for functioning in one vehicle. Then later it started connected and engaging in different uh, information exchange level. Then went ahead with respect to common and uh, um, secure platform. Then further, we are talking about uh, connecting the whole vehicle into the cloud and seamlessly functioning with the remote execution. I, rem um, I had opportunity to work in this platform for last 20, 25 years, I remember uh, 25 years back where I was involved in the development of a software for engine management system, where my file sizes were around 500 files and around 250 functions, where in set of exper experts could control, manage, integrate, deliver, and have some, maybe something around 1,000, 1,500 calibratable parameters. During those days, we were, um, our challenge was to communicate and convince OEMs to utilize CAN for integrating uh, integrating controllers. 
and so that to have a one vehicle platform or e network but today that has grown into uh, the complex uh, ecosystem of maybe mid level vehicle having 90 controllers uh, in one platform which is seamlessly working uh, with binded with various platform so the uh, the configuration systems tool chains processes which had started during those days and which we had adopted in different pockets it's no more viable to deliver tomorrow's solutions maybe um, maybe within a domain controller some components could function efficiently but when it comes to the overall management and bringing the accountability for the vehicle uh, vehicle and seamless functioning and monitoring after delivery of the vehicle it is not sufficient so one need to have a, a integrated life cycle management of whether this is software hardware integrating all the tool chain under one platform and integrating all the ecosystem of knowledge base under one platform is very important in order to assist us um, us in the development of a um, uh, whole ecosystem of automotive integrated solutions we have a, a a space has been developed and integrated seamlessly into today's development environment um uh, iso 26262 um uh, detailed framework is support um, is able to help us in terms of how exactly you uncover different failure mechanism with respect to the categorization of the safety uh, safety security um, uh, security compliance of various controllers which is uh, um, uh, which is providing uh, uh, which is uh, uh, going to affect uh, your product lines so this um, uh, if i recall uh, some of the situations maybe 2000 uh, 2008 where um, the el electric vehicles uh, uh, like old uh, priors and are getting developed during that time um, uh, the talk safety issues were led to defining iso 26262 standards where we all were involved how exactly prevent vehicle malfunctioning of uh, vehicles and different security levels safety levels today it has grown to the very highest level uh, in order to support multi dimensional approach for advanced um, uh, ADAS and autonomous vehicles. So uh, this uh, vertical has grown in order to support and identify and best practices at every functional level and functional interaction level, identifying the failure mechanism, having the support system and the expertise level within the OEM framework, within the external expert network, which has grown enough having a common framework across the organization. Seemingly, today's a spice framework is capable of uh, uh, capable of integrating all model based engineering from tool chains uh, artifacts uh, of a software hardware software integration up to validation so this framework these two framework are helping us uh, in order to um, guide step step by step process for until the final delivery, but this is not enough because the whole system today, uh, today uh, there are many vocabularies. I can say many, um, I can say systems are getting added. Uh, maybe one can say um, the shift in electrical architecture, shift in your, uh, maybe the computing, shifting resources, having the resources in vehicle, out vehicle, in cloud, and still deliver the same, uh, same solutions maybe service oriented features where you need to plug in and facilitate in the whole system everything can be integrated developed and plugged in and delivered seamlessly without any issues so this is just a, just a short uh, overview of um, uh, spice where which defines uh, uh, the complete uh, uh, infrastructure for uh, uh, for supplier engagement to your uh, system engineering software validation software design requirement and uh, the the overall management framework how exactly you audit how do you intervene and how do you manage uh, uh, what are the mechanism you utilize for audit auditing and uh, looking at the compliance of the overall artifacts and the, uh, up to the delivery for each gates uh, whether it every OEM, uh, though they may be having different product line and the processes, the finally when it comes to the standard um, uh, standardization of, uh, um, of 
cross uh, standardization of deliverables is the ESPI ISO 262 defined in the same language and uh, same, uh, same level across the organization wherein uh, we understand uh, with respect to the hazards, with respect to the, maybe the, um, uh, I can say uh, the having a common platform across the organization or across the OEs, uh, which can be seamlessly integrated and uh, can be utilized for various product lines. So it is uh, 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 this slide just for uh, uh, us to remind uh, how exactly we have come to the level of uh, uh, level uh, level of safety security having uh, uh, having influence on the ba our basic design of component level. Maybe you can take uh, taking an example of uh, maybe the pro uh, the component. Uh, maybe you can say ADA system, which could be of uh, SLB or SLD level, wherein the internal uh, definition of uh, whether it is uh, um, definition of uh, uh, overall internal architecture and the performance and uh, the design, how exactly it is uh, uh, features are designed, how it is integrated, how it is partitioned are totally, uh, totally depends upon what kind of categorization of the threats and the boundaries are defined with respect to the product, uh, to the vehicle, vehicle features. Uh, this slide, I just put it just to show, um, uh, to show the current level of uh, uh, the various components which function at uh, uh, a different level in tandems. Uh, basically, th there are many functional components or the hardware and software which is uh, um, which is known to the uh, uh, to the engineers, uh, maybe the, for the team of engineers. But there are many components or many dynamics of the product. Uh, product linkages could be unknown. Where in today's environment, uh, today's complex environment, wherein uh, different subsystems are getting developed across within the, uh, maybe outside the organization at our tier one level, at uh, outside, maybe the integ integrated from start startup organization for various functionalities or various models. Then what happens, uh, unless or until whole team is integrated into a common platform, common uh, platform of tool chain or the integrated framework of development, it is very difficult to know at development stage uh, the issues and malfunctions which could happen or which could detect at later stage, uh, later stage of the product life cycle. So hence, uh, it is just, uh, um, uh, I'm just trying to give some of the few uh, use cases, like the majority of the issues uh, in earlier situations, we could have, we could have uh, opportunity or the limited features where within, uh, located within the vehicle architecture. Now, as, as the features are getting developed uh, across the cloud and other service-oriented architecture where the computing may occur somewhere where the execution or uh, may, uh, execution can happen within the vehicle itself. In such kind of situations, um, uh, situation, the manageability of various effects on the vehicle uh, need to be realized advanced during the, uh, maybe the um, initial, uh, um, the upstream level itself. So for that, one need to understand the limits and boundaries of the whole ecosystem. Uh, that is where our um, integrated uh, uh, software lifecycle management process and framework uh, comes into picture. So uh, in, uh, to, to summarize, uh, today everybody wants to have a success uh, with the whatever new features and uh, delivering uh, as per the needs of a market as per the needs uh, a solution which is available, but still every um, uh, the solution which reaches to the customer need to have a unified quality and the framework as it is expected out of the, um, from the organizational quality standards. Basically the branding and all other things should reflect in terms of the solution which is delivered. Uh, delivered. So finally it comes, what is the ideal way of doing things? how it's, uh, every OEM or every uh, or tier one, tier two will have their own way of managing with the different tool sets. One could be, some could be legacy, some could be um, newly adopted or learning and not known the, all the features still getting going ahead with respect to the process. So finally, one uh, you need to have some kind of system which could really support us 
currently uh, as after uh, my this short note uh, the ibm framework would give the right answers for people like us who have uh, really gone through the many various cycles of development i look forward to this good presentation from ibm on this uh, elm thank you thank you very much uh, uh, lasin i think you covered uh, uh, beautifully uh, everything that is needed uh, i just I just have for this particular forum in fact you Uh, you know, started talking about uh, basically, uh, you know, um, prepare and prevent, then you know, repair and repent, which was a good, strong tone that was set for this uh, forum, and an importance of ISO two six two six two, and then uh, uh, ACE files, uh, which not only lays a strong foundation for these automotive OEMs and tier ones to start producing globally acceptable vehicles and components. and then you also talked about the importance of the necessary frameworks and necessary these these compliances how they help you to live you up live up to the standards that are needed by the global uh, standards and then um, good to note that you know you talked about how industry is evolved in the last 30 years uh, right from a lot more hardware innovation to now more of it is software driven and now moving forward to service oriented architecture i also noted a point that you know a lot more ecus will not be in the car but they will be on the hosted environment but i think mostly new features will be more of plug and play uh, clients can pick and choose uh, in if were in you know whatever it is the vehicle that you may have you can just pick and choose a set of feature that you want based on which uh, the hosted uh, ecus shall provide those uh, functionalities and i think there is growing complexity and to adhere to these compliance needs plus also you need an infrastructure which can support you and that's where we talk uh, you did mention about uh, hoping for an ibm session to see an ibm solution to see how they can comprehensively support that particular vision and i think uh, that's a very uh, well said uh, madam vilasini i think uh, hope to you have hope to have you in one more session to have much more detailed conversation thank you very much okay uh, without further uh, delay i will quickly move on to our next speaker uh, mr uh, andreas and andreas is basically a solution engineer uh, ibm australia uh, he, he comes with about strong two decade uh, of experience in the it industry uh, being a trusted advisor he primarily assets worldwide automotive uh, clients aerospace clients and defense clients right so with uh, Uh, you know helping them realize their uh, vision of uh, software and systems engineering and then strategy for developing uh, newer products using ibm cutting edge technologies andreas over to you you're on mute andreas you're still on mute yeah okay yeah no, sorry, we can hear you yeah, yeah. okay Sorry about that. So, um, IBM approach. Um, just move this to the side. Um, so, Madam was talking about this uh, engineering platform, and IBM has, um, for the last I don't know, ten, fifteen years, spent uh, very much effort in creating this platform. So, it's a platform for the engineering process. and what we want to achieve is improve of course the vehicle quality but um improve also the on time delivery of these these platforms uh, these these vehicles and in increase use everything that is more efficient to um to build uh, vehicles uh, that's what we try to do um now the discussion we're having today is is maybe on the second bullet point here Uh, how can we use this platform to make standards and regulatory compliance uh, a byproduct of the delivery process and i'll show you how we we were doing that um before we we go into the the ace bias and the iso 26262 uh, details let me just give you a quick overview of of the platform um so here um, you you see um the IBM we call it engineering life cycle management platform you might know it as application life cycle management it is a a, a platform to develop uh, systems and software and so that needs to include requirements management uh, design testing 
uh, planning, workflow management, configuration management, change management, and all kinds of reporting and dashboards. So just diving real brief into the various components of this platform, let's start out with the requirements management. So this um, tool component is, uh, has everything to create those uh, requirements, those levels of requirements that Madam was talking about, you know, from the highest um, uh, user point of view, uh, what, what, or marketing point of view, what kind of requirements they have for a vehicle going down into the system and the software, uh, detailed design, um, uh, detailed requirements, um, you can define them in there. You can organize these requirements. You have hierarchy of requirements in there. You can work on those requirements uh, collaboratively with suppliers between OAM and suppliers. You can review those requirements and then you can link those requirements to other artifacts that, that might be uh, necessary or interesting. So a model or a test case or um, an, an, a 3D, uh, 3D design model or something like that. Right? And then you can version and baseline uh, these requirements as well. So for reuse, uh, all these requirements can be versioned and you can do a variant management on, on these. So that's the first component of, of this platform. The second component is, is a system design and that's everything to do design the architecture, um, model the dynamic behavior of, of, um, of the application or the software that you're building or the system that you're building. You specify the interfaces you have. Um, you can, um, if you wanted to generate code for, for EEPROMs uh, that are in the vehicle, and then you can run and analyze and, and simulate um, um, these architectures and, and make sure on, on paper or in the computer that stuff works before you actually build something in, in hardware. So that's system design. The next uh, step would probably then be test management. So everything to create these uh, test cases, test plans, test suites. To, to manage the quality of, of the products you're creating. So be it, you know, the ABS system that was, was talked about or the whole vehicle, um, what, what are the tests uh, that test sets you have to execute? How do you manage that? How do you manage the test coverage that everything is tested? Um, uh, manage test environments, harnesses and, and so on and integrate uh, third party test tools. So third component testing is, is in, in that platform. Fourth component is, is workflow management. So everything from creating a plan um, and release milestones and, and all that, uh, creating tasks for different activities, tracking cross progress is in there. Um, and again, all these uh, individual work items can be linked to the requirements, to the design, to the test cases, to whatever you want. Um, uh, and, and that creates that traceability tree that is important in the, for instance, in the ASPICE regulation, right? And then besides that, this, this component also does um, uh, version management of source code or artifacts. And it also includes change management. So what happens if, um, you know, high level, someone decides, oh, we need this additional functional function in there because we have all this traceability in built in the tool and suddenly you can do a, a very quick impact analysis, which components do I need to touch and, and how much effort is that going to be? So that's the, the fourth component. And, and then fifth, um, there, there are sort of uh, things surrounding that, which ASPICE also requires. So first of all, you need a defined process. So here in, we have a, something called Method Composer, which is a, a process authoring tool. You need to show the assessors that your, your process is defined and, and uh, how you show that is, is just a web page and with this authoring tool that comes built in with, with some of the um, processes. And you see here, I, I highlighted roles and it has work products in there. It has a standard description in there. And then, you know, for each standard, it has the base practices and what you need to do for the base practice and what kind of reports you can generate. So this is for your engineers to understand how they are supposed to be, be working. Um, so that's, that's one component. And then of course you wanna track the development 
And so we have dashboards and we have reporting and compliance reporting as well. Uh, so there's a multitude of, of dashboards that, that uh, you know, individual uh, roles can, can look at and find the information that is really important for them. Still, everything is in the platform and there's just one source of truth. So there is no, no exchanging of documents. This is all real-time information that, that you get here. And finally, there is, there is a tool called Insights. And with Insights, you can, all that information you have in your, in your platform, the requirements, the test cases, the, the designs, the activities, um, whatever it is, um, you can find the traceability between those. So here in, in this um, example, you see sort of your, your design physical blocks, uh, your architecture is in, in green, the purplish color is everything that is testing. The bluish color is everything that is requirements. So you can filter and, you know, if there's a problem with one of these things or there's a change request on one of these requirements, you can click on that and it filters out what is connected to um, this requirement up in, and downstream. So it makes it much easier for you to find your way around uh, what, what you need to do. So that, that was really quick, um, you know, the, the platform that we have. Um, it is really intended to um, manage multiple architectures, to visualize, simulate, analyze the data that is in there, to help with the collaboration, to have one source of truth, one place where you, you go to and avoid, you know, meeting after meeting after meeting, reading documents and documents and documents and, and deliver the, the right outcome. And it is, um, you know, what, what we're saying here is sort of, it, it is also built on an agile, if you want it uh, to run your OEM um, um, platform product development on an agile way Please. and reducing time uh, to, to market, uh, it is built in, in the system. So then let's talk about standards. So standards, uh, Madam mentioned it, ASPICE is one of the standards that is, is required uh, nowadays between OEMs and, and suppliers. Um, we have ISO 262 for safety, we have the autonomous vehicles, we have cybersecurity and so on. So our customers were asking us, you know, we have this, this great platform, how can we use that platform to help us with the standards and, and, and show that we're following all these uh, rules and regulations? So what we've done, uh, come up with is, um, let's start with ASPICE. So here you have all the ASPICE or the relevant um, um, base practices for, for automotive. So system development up here, software development, uh, integration and testing all, all over on the on the right hand side, uh, supplier monitoring, project management, quality assurance, configuration management. So all these things I talked about before in the platform, they're mapped somewhere in in the ASPICE regulation, right? And so what we did is we we mapped the tools to make it easier for our customers to decide, you know, how do I do that? Map the tools to each one of these base practices, and we didn't stop there. Um, what we did is um, provided templates that really implement, you see here on the dark blue stuff is, is the ASPICE and the more teal kind of color is the additions that we did in, in the second version for the safety regulations. So what we did is we created templates for requirements management. So using that template, you would automatically Besides um, doing your requirements management right, you would automatically be able to get reports out of the system that would help you with the, the ASPICE and ISO 262 audits. Um, so you have all the information there. Same thing for Rhapsody, same thing for test management, same thing for, for the workflow. Um, and then up here, you know, we added some dashboards so they can see um, if you if you wanted to, if, you know the the uh, internal assessors, if they wanted to to work on how are we doing, um, do an internal audit, we have all these dashboards available. So there's a on top of that we had uh, in the process I mentioned method composer. Uh, there's a solution mapping for ASPICE. There's a solution mapping for ISO 26262. 
uh, like I said, all the roles and work items and products is all there. So a, a customer that is using ELM, he could take these templates, in, uh, install them, and start um, turning out all these um, uh, um, audit uh, details that an auditor would probably ask for. Now you're asking maybe uh, cyber regulations. Well, they are in evolving, but we're working on, on these as well. So in the very near future, we'll have a version three of, of um, this ASPICE compliance or automotive compliance uh, um, tool sets and, and templates that will take care of the cyber regulations as well. So let me just um, show you real quick what, what we're thinking or what we have. As I mentioned, we have all the ELM-based tools, um, testing, requirements management, and so on. We've added process description there, how to use these tools for ASPICE, for ISO 26262. We've provided templates, we've provided reports, and we also provide a sample database. So um, a new customer implementing it would have a, an example they can sort of copy and play around with um, to see how it's implemented. And we didn't do this alone. We have two very um, big partners there. One is uh, we work with Kugler Mark from the assessor side and ask them, so when you do an assessment, what are the key things that you look at? What kind of reports did you want? Uh, what are the, the things that the supplier needs to show and OEM needs to show? Uh, so we worked with them to, to um, create these, these um, uh, off-the-shelf um, templates. And we also worked with an automotive group of some of the biggest um, OEMs out there. And, and um, not only OEMs, but suppliers out there working with them saying, how, how do you use ASPICE in your day-to-day -day process? So we think it's a, a very practical um, thing that we're, we're, we're offering here. Let me just go one step deeper. So what we have is ELM, like I said, all of these, these sort of five components. And then we have the, the ASPICE view of things. What we did, we created a mapping between these two. And uh, Morgan will, will in a second show this mapping. I'll just take one example here. So here you have your system uh, one uh, requirements elicitation um, uh, regulation. And here it shows the base um, processes that you have, base process one, two. And, and then the mapping sort of is, how do you use our tools to uh, deliver uh, on these base practices? So obtain stakeholder requirements and, and requests, blah, blah, blah. You do that indoors next, so out of the box, just with the, the product, uh, we have the, the requirements uh, stakeholder art, uh, artifact type uh, to identify the system level activities. Then we have additional and AC version one just says this is the automotive compliance addition that comes. Well, there is a detailed stakeholder requirements. Uh, there is a, a custom model viewer um, and so on. And then in, in reports, there's extra reports we've created. And then for the second one, there is some uh, indication how you would do understand takeholder expectations uh, in the um, workflow management tool. So every single base practice is, is mapped to these tools to help our, our clients uh, using this automotive compliance tool. That's probably just a repeat. So we have you know, templates for everything. We have reports. I'll just not go in there. Uh, so I hope you see that um, you know this engineering lifecycle management solution that IBM has really helps you to manage complexity, uh, to deliver the the regulation audit controls that that you need, but of course to to improve uh, vehicle quality, increase the reuse, and, uh, and improve on delivery time. Now, just one last um, thing I want to show, uh, sort of a real time, uh, a real example of how uh, companies use uh, this um, offering. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about OSLC. It's, it's a, a linked um, open service lifecycle um, management um, standard. 
Um, IBM ELM is based on that standard. And the idea is that you have this um, linked data set from any tool. You can access the information in that tool. So here you see examples. So there's change management, all the change requests that are in there. Uh, this could be our tool. This could be a, a different tool. We have requirements management. We have test management. We have configuration management. All these things are linked uh, together. And there is, um, you know, OS OSLC is sort of the language uh, to exchange that information between tools that are in this chain. So we have architecture management, quality management, configuration management, change management, requirements management, domains in, in the OSLC, which is an open standard um, definition. And, and what it uh, allows you to do is um, instead of copying data across from a let's say from a requirements tool to the test tool to then run the tests on it. Um, we have these links and you can, it allows rich hover. So if you're in testing and you hover over a, a, a link to a, a requirement, that information shows up and you don't have to cross into the tool. But if you want to, you can click on it and you, you jump into that tool. Um, you can query the whole, um, network and get the reports out of uh, and the full traceability out of the whole thing and ibm is not alone in in this uh, endeavor uh, while ibm created the first uh, version of oslc uh, you know you see some of the automotive um, suppliers from a from a tool perspective here as well and they they uh, uh, also have an oslc in interface so when we say you know, math works here, electrical simulation, for instance, if we want to get that out of the, um, the link from the requirements tool, it traverses into math works or mentor. And let me show you the example of, of mentor just here. So here you see from the um, ELM insights tool, you know, this on the top is sort of what is stored in, um, in the ELM tool. But down here be below this uh, dashed line, that's all stored in the, in the mentor tool. So suddenly you, with this platform that Madam was referring to that, that um, OEMs and, and suppliers uh, want, suddenly you have the picture not only in the individual tools, but across all the tools where you can look at, you know, from system requirements into EE process tab, EE design, and then, um, you know, subsystems and sub subsystems and, and so on. So if you clicked on here in, in Siemens Mentor, you could find the, the traceability up to, let's say a safety requirement that might be stored in, in the LM tool. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what we're offering here with the ASPICE package. And I'll hand back to um, Dananjay. Thank you very much, uh, Andreas. I think you uh, just covered everything that is needed. In fact, uh, you did cover well how uh, some of the complexities and challenges that uh, uh, Madam talked about, how IBM solution really kind of addresses them, uh, particularly talking about uh, uh, the various uh, you know, pillars or disciplines of uh, engineering lifecycle management, right from requirements management, configuration, chain management, test management, how they are tightly integrated together. And not only that, it also enables uh, not a static uh, guidance document, but also enacts the entire ASPICE process or ISO 26262 process within the tool chain, uh, which not only allows uh, you know, practitioners to kind of use this product and use these solutions to achieve collaboration, traceability, requirements management, and many other things, but makes it a very seamless effort to comply with some of these uh, standards. And I think this platform is also built on, uh, you mentioned about OSLC, which is an open source lifecycle integration, which makes it uh, uh, you know, fully open, uh, built on open standards and has openness to integrate with uh, many subsystem. I saw in your slide that it already has integration with MATLAB, Simulink, uh, Jira, Git, and then uh, many other subsystems many of the third party systems, which is, uh, you know, definitely the story today, because many of the automotives, uh, OEMs and as well as tier ones would have already made some investment into some of these bits and pieces of products. But I think this platform is not trying to replace them and it is trying to coexist with them 
to and and then provide you provide the end to end traceability which is very well covered thank you very much uh, uh, andreas okay without uh, further ado i will probably go ahead with the, the next uh, session which is uh, um, uh, going to be a product demo you know we will just uh, have a quick uh, peep into a, a product demo of ibm elam solution so i'd like to call upon uh, Murugan for this, and Murugan has been associated with the uh, you know aerospace and defense and automotive industry in the area of systems and software engineering for more than 15 years, and his primary expertise include implementation of these uh, engineering uh, lifecycle management solution along with uh, uh, industry standards like ASPIs and ISO 26262 uh, by aligning to fitting the technologies of IBM solution. Uh, Murugan, over to you for a quick demo. Thanks, Anandji. Yeah, you can start sharing. Just sharing my screen. Anandji, just give me a heads up once it is visible to see my screen. We can, we can see your screen. Yeah, thanks, Anandji. Thanks, and thanks, Andreas, for the introduction. So, as Andreas did mention, we'll start right from the base, the fundamentals of the dashboard, where you'll be able to look at the entire, as uh, Andreas mentioned, the first important thing when we talk about the assessment is how are we doing with respect to the program, right? And with respect to the artifact, be traceability and all the compliances, which the standards look for. So the login would be basically for your dashboard where you'll be able to look at the different dashboards which you provide as part of the solution. And this dashboard is pre-populated, obviously without the data, the uh, at tabs and all the other artifacts in the reports reveal as long as you populate the data. It's one click of a button where you'll be able to use the template. Now I've created this using a template. Now, before we get into the, all the different tabs and look at the prospects of what data these show in terms of the assessment from the ASPICE perspective, let's dump into a portal as Andrea was mentioning for a method composer, where it gives us an overview in terms of oh, not only overview and the details of what processes and how have we mapped these processes which is going to comply to both your ASPIs and the ISO 26262. So if you look at this window here, I would show you the legend on the right side where you will be able to see the processes which are in blue, obviously is going to be ASPIs and the green ones are going to be in ISO 26262. So it lays out the processes right from the manager processes, the be it system level support process, and you see the subsystem level processes. And it also defines all the roles, work products, which are mapped to both of these standards, right? Now, let me quickly go into one of these specific standards. Now, before I go into one of these specific areas, let's say a system analysis or a requirement elicitation, what we need to look at is what are the work item templates which we have and what are the work products which gets delivered as part of this process, right? So if you look at the work products, what we've done is we have catered the work products across the different disciplines, be it your requirements, be it your architecture, be it your quality, or VAT or planning, right? So you would be able to look at all the deliverables which are available, the work products which are available as part of the process, which is already created and mapped to the solution as well, which you'll be able to utilize once you start using the templates. You will also be able to see the different kinds of work items, which Andreas was mentioning, which is available out of the box. And these are already implemented as part of the templates when you kickstart your projects. And let me come back and pick, let's say, any one of the processes. For example, let's say I pick up the system requirement analysis, right? When I click on this, it'll tell you in system requirement analysis, what I'm supposed to do as part of ASPI's 3.1 SIS2, right? System requirement analysis, which is SIS2, SIS.2. It describes the purpose or objective of the specific phase, right? The process. It also tells us what are the different tools which I'm going to use let's say for example from the system requirements perspective if i have to collect the system requirements which solution i look at i look at those next generation and it says i create a system requirement module the artifact type is also being defined and these artifact types are already pre-populated we we'll also see the description it says what i'm supposed to do as part of a system requirement right it goes with the tool and what you're supposed to do with the tool now let's take an example once you have the system requirements being captured, right? And you start detailing them. Then you would go into the model manager, which is basically obviously more from the modeling perspective. And it'll tell you what I'm supposed to do with this specific Rhapsody model manager. It says, first of all, I'll have to create a use case model, right? Now, what is the artifact type? It's basically a model element. And what is the description? So you look at all the activities which I'm supposed to do as part of system analysis. 
uh, in different tools and how they are mapped and what activities you're going to create. And it will also have the detailed steps, what I'm going to achieve once I follow this specific process, right? And you look at, if you look at from ASPICE, we've also given you an ASPICE profile in Rhapsody, which you will be able to use and kickstart the system analysis architecture perspective from the architecture perspective. Now, once you've done with the requirements and you have covered with the respective models for, from the coverage perspective and created all these profiles, you will also have to produce the reports from the assessment perspective, right? So we have created all those reports for you. Let's say, for example, requirements, I need to look at the downstream traceability from the system requirement, right? And which is the tool which is going to help you? It is basically JRS. And it gives you a description what I'm going to capture as part of this report. And these reports are available out of the box in the template. You just have to import into your instance. And you could also see on the right side, it says, what is the purpose of the specific uh, report? It's basically going to show the SS, SSE, how we are going to achieve the traceability, right? So similarly, you have a lot of reports based on the standards and which tool and what is the use of that specific tool as well? So if you look at one of those requirements missing from the downstream, you'll say, I'm trying to do a gap analysis, right? I'm going to do a traceability report. I'm going to have the gap analysis report. I'm going to do an impact analysis as well, right? You can see the impact analysis. So all the tools and also from the planning perspective. So you'll be able to see how it is mapped and what are the reports which will get generated. And these reports are available for you to uh, generate it. You'll also be able to see the related information model, uh, how the uh, traceability will be achieved and what, what are the different artifacts which I'm going to create across these different tools as well. For example, in doors, what attributes are available for you? These are already created for you. And then let's say if we want to look at the related processes, how I'm going to achieve this process, it gives you a pictorial representation of the roles and the activities which these roles would carry out to produce the required output of the system requirement analysis, right? So if you see there is a stakeholder requirement and there is a solution he picked what he creates, right? And then there is a requirement engineer who does all these activities, right? Starting from the requirement capturing, creating the apex and stuff like that. I would also be able to see the breakdown elements. When I say breakdown elements, how am I going to do these? What are the different tasks which I'm going to do it in different tools? And keeping in mind that I'm mapping these processes in the tool as well, right? As Andreas did mention the mapping. So you have the mapping to the standard when you look at this task. It is a supplier two to base practices three. That means you need to conduct verification, right? And it says for performing this requirement analysis, what is the role? It's basically a requirement engineer who does this activity. What inputs would he require? Require basically an epic and a stakeholder requirement. And then what is the output he's going to produce? Basically analysis report capability. You will uh, create a lot of reviews for the requirements, right? Uh, within the team system architecture and probably obviously the requirements which gets created. You will also be able to see the detailed steps, what I'm going to do to achieve this as well. Apart from what I'm supposed to do, the detailed step as well comes in here. And the biggest advantage what you see is how we have seamlessly integrated this process content to my uh, instance is basically I've already logged into my instance. You see here, you could actually, if there is a change process, change comes into your ASPICE process from the consortium, right? You will have to make sure that you update that uh, changes as well. Now here, there is an option where people can log in and key in a comment. Now this becomes a change request for a process in my instance, and people can review it. And then the process author can go and change that accordingly, right? So that's the uh, thing which I wanted to show you from the uh, process content perspective. Another five minutes quickly to go on to the dashboard. Uh, from here, I, I took you to the AC uh, portal where you saw the method contents. And here you'll be able to click on any one of this to look at how the solution is progressing in terms of, uh, I've just taken one of the solution for ADAS, right? In terms of solution roadmap, what are the capabilities? Basically we are using the safe standards, uh, agile and safe standard to make sure we use the program increments and the capabilities uh, sets as well. And then you go back and you could look at from here itself. I can look at the program pro uh, progress in terms of how I'm doing in terms of different cruise control, uh, control as one of the features and then monitor as one of the features and you'll be able to see the data available here these are out of the box reports as and when i start creating the data you would be able to see this dashboards live in your uh, projects as well based on the template which we have shared you could also look at the team progress how are the teams doing how many uh, stories have been opened right how many uh, work items are there what are the status right how many open stories are there how many closed stories are there it's a, it's just a quick uh, bird's eye view where you'll be able to see the entire detail as well. 
You could also look at the support process, right? So when I talk about uh, support process, you will also look at some of the risk assessment. So when you look at risk, for example, if I have to click on one of the risk, it will actually take me and tell me there is a risk item which is automatically read. Now, this risk item along with the different attributes, states, and the different tabs are created as part of a method content. I just need to push and act that specific risk all the uh, uh, process assets to my instance where I'm running. So you could see here, there is a risk uh, automatically created. You will also be able to do the risk analysis. You can associate this risk to a specific process which you feel the risk is associated to, right? Be it any of the practices uh, across your ACE5, right? You will be able to associate them and you'll be able to predict what are the different changes, uh, maybe the probability or the impact of the specific risk, right? and what it is planned for. So you get uh, the entire details uh, from the uh, dashboard itself, right? Now, <clears throat> quickly talking about two important things, uh, basically from the requirements perspective, you will be able to look at a quick dashboard where it talks about uh, looking at all the requirements and their coverage from the compliance perspective, obviously the traceability from the validation of validating the requirements. So you click on all these, uh, any, any of these requirements, which has, it will tell you, whether the requirement has associated test cases or not. And on the right side, you would be able to see the legend. The color shows that there are no test cases associated, so I can act on this. Now I click on another module, you'll be able to see the data getting changed instantaneously, right? It says there are test cases, but they've never been executed. Similarly, if you look at the other ones, you will see a mix and match of uh, validation of the test cases, and there are test cases, they've not been executed and stuff like that. So it gives you a very quick view in terms of analyzing the uh, gap very quickly from the out of the dash, uh, board dash, dashboards. And one of the quick ones from the requirements perspective, let's say I have the functional safety requirements. So I have the functional safety requirement and we have given you the template in such a way that you have all the ASIL values and the attributes are captured. And these attributes, all the, uh, the ASIL will be calculated obviously based on the standard calculator, which we have created basically a HARA hazard analysis where these are the standards, which is how do I arrive at the ASIL values? Now you could pick any one of this uh, uh, when you assume things and let's say you put some ASIL values, right? You want to validate whether this ASIL is values right based on the standard. You will be able to pick this and then you will have an option of just check the ALS analysis ASIL. It will go and give you the right set of value. If it is wrong, it will prompt you as well. So all the data and the assets are available for you. All that we need to do is make sure we go and populate the data and, and see uh, what exactly is required, what are the gap analysis and stuff like that. And finally, one quick uh, overview where it talks about one uh, view where it says, how am I doing in terms of life cycle status? You look right from the V, from the left to the right. Uh, how, how are the requirements doing? Are they satisfied? How much of them are not satisfied? And try to pick them up and make sure that we will be able to focus on the things which we are lagging and then, then try to progress that as well. And the last part before I give on to give it to Dhananjay is basically the out of the box reports, which uh, Andrea was mentioning, you could see one quick report, which we generated, which says ASIL decomposition violation report. Now this is out of the box. If there are any of the reports, right? Any of the data, which is not being met, you will be able to see this. There are there is a requirement and there is an ASIL level given to it, but it says criteria, the decomposed safety requirement is not available. So that does not meet the criteria, simple as that. And if the criteria is met, you see this. So this is basically the documentation, which obviously will be looked at from the assessment uh, perspective. So I have many of these uh, reports which are available out of the box. I'm just giving you a glance of it, where it talks about the reports and you'll be able to look at the actual data which is coming from the uh, system. And you could also look at the interface control document where it goes into a different modules and it will also pull up different interfaces and it'll give you the description of these interfaces as well. Just going down to make sure you see the interfaces down. Yes, yeah, so you see all the interfaces, the proxy ports available, how are they connected, right? So the entire interface interface, uh, interface control uh, document, which is, which is required, will be available for you, which is taken from the integrated uh, tool chain. So that's it I had, that's all I had. Any questions, Dhananjay, back to you. Hey, thank you, um, Murugan. I think that was uh, very well covered in a very short period of time. I know for how difficult it is for a, a you know a person who knows well about the product to restrict yourself into just 10, 15 minutes. I think you covered it very well. Of uh, this platform, not only just uh, helps 
uh, using requirements management and change in configuration management, project planning and test management, but also uh, helps you, you know, live in that compliance world in the sense automatically tools enable you to be compliant. It gives you enough and more information about how you can be compliant with the solution. Thank you so much, Murugan, for covering that uh, pieces of uh, features of this platform. Looks really uh, very exciting. We'll quickly move on to our next segment, uh, which is uh, Q&A. And uh, if any of you have any questions, please feel free to drop in in the Q&A box. Uh, we will be more than happy to uh, take it up. Um, I just have one question from uh, uh, Niranjan. Uh, I think uh, Murli may be able to answer this question. Uh, Murli, uh, there's a question here from Niranjan which say, who says that uh, uh, this solution, is it available on a SaaS model uh, for them to start uh, exploring this option? Yeah, the, uh, thanks, Niranjan. Uh, the complete solution, what was presented, is available as a SaaS offering also, apart yeah. from the uh, standard perpetual license offerings. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Murli, for that. Uh, so it, it has both perpetual option, which is nothing yep. but you can have it on-prem, and then SaaS model, which is a pay-as-you-go model. Right, so thank you. And uh, another question from Suhas, who says that, uh, uh, do they need to pay anything, uh, or do they need to buy uh, for the ASPICE compliance as a separate toolkit, or it comes as part of the solution? Uh, so Murugan, do you want to take that up? Yeah, so from the licensing perspective, yes, Sananjay. Yeah, uh, it's it's an add-on uh, mm -hmm. which comes uh, on the base ELM as Andrea has mentioned in the slide. So you need to, you have the ELM base package, and then this is an add-on which sits on top of the uh, ELM base package. Okay, so the it sits uh, seamlessly on top of ELM base package, uh, right. but it is provided as an additional uh, component for yes. uh, as a license component for people right. to be aligned with this. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. Okay, that's uh, and that's one. And um, so, um, Naveen, one question for you. Uh, basically, in case of they uh, need to evaluate the solutions, whom do whom do they contact? Naveen, are you there, or even Murli can answer this question if Naveen is not there. Murli, yeah, not an issue. Yeah, sure, not an issue. So they they can reach out to us. The mail ID is kind is available. It's you have put it up on the screen. They can reach out to any one of us. Uh, in fact, uh, the appropriate would be to reach out to Microgenesis team. Uh, they have a technically qualified team to support any kind of evaluation. Also, we are there to help them. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, we have a few more questions, but I think we have uh, time limit. So I'll hand it over to Eshi. Eshi, over to you, Eshi. Thank you very much, Mr. Dhananjay, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Once you leave the webinar, you will also receive a brief survey form, and, uh, and we would request if you would complete that and provide your feedback, as it is extremely valuable. Thank you again for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Please take care and have a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Yep. Thank you. Have a good day.